Hi everyone, Simon here again. Episode 5, Jib. Season 2. We left it. Casey. Moy. Another girl. And Jib. Jib saying to Casey, Would you like a trip to Singapore? Would you take Jib and her cousin uh, next weekend? to Singapore and I'll, I've already got the accommodation hotel sorted, I'll give you some money for spending, maybe a bit for your time um, and the airfare, everything sorted, you'll be doing me a favour uh, because I've got something I can't get out of, my well, Casey's thinking yeah no problem at all, I, I don't see why not, that'd be great, I'll do that for you got his whiskey in his hand, two beautiful women, three beautiful women in the garden, this beautiful house, this party Jib says to Moy, I'll sort it with you later in the week um, and turns around and wanders off and the farang that Casey had seen, the tall guy, quite muscular was Junta, which was Jib's driver anyway, Jib wanders off Moy's all excited now. Sends Casey, oh that's fantastic, you can take us, you can take care of us. Just be shopping, it'll be good fun. And it's next weekend. It's gonna be the Friday morning. Fine. Anyway, they uh, carry on drinking, eating, having fun. Mama San comes back over and joins them. Moy tells the Mama San what's happening about the Singapore trip. Mama San knew all about it. Casey's thinking, two beautiful women, Singapore trip. Life doesn't get any better than this. I mean, he really likes Moy, and she's looking great today. Anyway, they spend an hour or so there, and then that's it. They're going to head off. Out, say goodbye to everyone. Say goodbye to Lek. Lek, big smile at Casey. Mentions, thank you for the uh, whiskey. Off they go. Let's say this again. Mama San, Moy, this other girl, Moy's friend, and uh, Casey. Mercedes again, black. Off back to Patea. Now, over the next week, um, Casey goes in and out of the go go bar and arranges. It's going to be a Friday morning pickup early, about seven. And uh, Moy and her cousin are going to pick him up from his condo. Jib, she's back, she's at the condo, her condo, she's got Junta, the driver, she's sending him off, buying gold, she's got him trained now, he's parceling it up, posting it off, um, doing as he's told, driving her around, shopping, getting on fine, he seems perfect for her, for an assistant, the elders, tribe are in touch checking how things are going for her first experience of the new business she, everything's looking good she understands what's happening how it's working anyway the week goes Friday morning 7 o'clock Casey's got his passport he's got a weekend bag at pools yep the uh, uh, no it's not the black mercedes it's jibs honda her new honda and junta has picked them up i recognize him from the party um kc recognized him so that's the car that turned up moy's in there with a the cousin kc gets in and junta drives them to bangkok airport drops them off the airport fantastic so into the airport get a plane to Singapore I think it's Air Asia mm, can't remember I'm not sure but anyway they get through the customs everything 
onto the plane off to Singapore. It's not that long a flight, a few hours. Arrive in Singapore, first time Casey's been to Singapore. Now Casey is a musician, as I mentioned. He doesn't like floating around the world. He hasn't got huge money. He'd love to settle in Thailand. That's his dream. Um, but can't work, so that's why he has to keep going off to do his jobs, playing as a session guitarist or whatever he does. Land at Singapore. Before they get off the plane, Moy says to KC, um, <clears throat> it's best you have some cash because here in Singapore um, it looks better if you are seen to have money. She pulled out of her handbag a big roll of Thai money and I mean it was 100 baht notes, 1000 baht notes, it was over 100,000 baht just rolled up. She gives that to KC, says put that in your pocket, just in your trouser pocket and it's a big way, 100,000 baht, maybe more, a couple of thousand pounds, you know, a few thousand dollars. Casey's like, mm, okay, yeah, didn't really understand. Off the plane, passport control, all that, through to uh, immigration, and uh, they get stopped and uh, questioned by the immigration man there at Singapore and he's saying to Casey uh, you're with these two ladies and yeah yeah um, he starts quizzing him have you known them long and he yeah six months maybe a bit more um, that's Moy that's her cousin doing a shopping trip for the weekend and the guy says how are you uh, financing your trip and Casey puts his hand in his pocket, pulls out this wedge, you know, a bit of cash. Flash. You know, he just didn't use it. He just pulled it out of his pocket. You know, a bit of cash. Puts it back in his pocket. The guy looks at him, looks at the girls. Okay. The girls, passports, everything. Stamp, stamp, stamp. Enjoy your stay. Through they go. Come out of the airport. There's another car waiting for them. And again, it's a Mercedes, black. Don't think it was an S-Class, I think it might have been a smaller one, but black Mercedes. They get in the car, bags in the back. As soon as they start driving off from the airport, Moy and her cousin are like, as if they've won the lottery. They're, uh, they're just shouting and happy and screaming and both of them start kissing Casey and hugging him and they're just over the moon, like literally like they've just won the lottery. And Casey's like, what on earth's going on? What, what What's up with you two? Is this, you know, what's happening? And they say, oh, we'll tell it a bit, tell it a bit. Anyway, car goes off, gets to the hotel. Quite a nice hotel, probably a four star. I mean, Singapore's expensive anyway, but in the front door, Moy goes and checks them all in um, and gets the keys. Guy takes them up to the room. It's an apartment. It's like a two bedroom, big luxury apartment. Four star junior suite type. It's a tower block, nice views, it's quite high up. In they go. And the girls put their bags by the door. They go in. What happens next? Moy uh, says, "Oh, give me that cash back." Gives him the cash. Uh, Casey gives her the cash. She puts it in the handbag. Then turns around, and the two girls drag Casey into the shower. And for the next, it probably seemed like hours and hours and hours to him, but for the next hour or so. Both girls became aerobic instructors. Uh, very energetic, very overpowering, commanding. K 
Casey just had probably the best couple of hours of his aerobics experiences, let's say. The girls were all over him and just amazing time. Absolutely amazing. Casey just, he hadn't touched Moy before, hadn't been anywhere near her and the cousin, but then both of them turning into animals and together and him, he just didn't understand what's going on, why this sudden change in the girls. Very strange, loving it. Anyway, went on for a couple of hours. He was worn out, it was only sort of, I don't know, just after lunch time. <laughs> he crashes on the bed, the girls are in the shower, in the bathroom, mucking around. He crashes, has a sleep for a bit. He wakes up, um, no sign of the girls, a bit quiet in the apartment. So. Anyway, thinks so. I'll have a quick shower, wash, threw some clothes on. Quick look around the apartment, no, the girls aren't there. Anyway. Moy had mentioned that um, any room service was taken care of by uh, Auntie Jib, it was all sorted. Um, but they use this hotel, Jib uses this hotel a bit, so no problem. So he thinks, well, I'm hungry, I'll get some room service now, wait for the girls to come back and then we'll go out. So he orders up some food, a couple of drinks as well, in the fridge, the beers and he's looking over the the roof lines of Singapore out the window looks amazing food comes he's sitting down in this big apartment eating drinking just had amazing aerobics amazing anyway time goes by a little bit and it's knocking on an hour two hours sort of end of the afternoon now no sign of the girls Thinks that's strange, they've just gone off shopping. Thinks, well, might as well take advantage of being here. I uh, go out, and get some food, and have a couple of drinks. Um, thinks, yeah, he's got his phone, his Thai phone, it seems to be working, the sim. Thinks they'll ring me, or I'll come back and they'll be back later. Yeah, so. He's dressed, out the door, down to the reception, ask them down there where local restaurants and bars are and they sort of point him. And off he goes, wanders up, there's a sort of bar up the road he finds, has a couple of drinks, spots a restaurant just a little bit further up. And uh, Jib had given Moy um, the equivalent of about 20,000 bars about four, five hundred dollars that she'd given him separate from that big bunch for uh, just a bit of pocket money for Casey for the weekend. So he had their money. He goes to restaurants, has some food, another drink. It's coming on for about seven, eight o'clock in the evening. He thinks, right, I'll go back. The girls will be back soon, they haven't rung him. Back to the hotel, to the up to the apartment room. No sign of them. They're not anywhere. He says, very strange. They've been out. You know, he crashed about, what, three ish? Now it's about eight, nine in the evening and no sign. Anyway, he uh, starts to look around the apartment and he thinks something's not right, something's missing. Looks around and thinks, where's the girls' bags? They're, um, looks in the second bedroom and bathroom and every their bags had gone but they had a bag each definitely yeah they definitely brought them up she put that money of his back in her one bag boy yeah, that's strange where's the bags gone and they're not there hmm where's the girls gone he gets his phone got boy's number tries ringing it 
phone's not connected. Nothing at all, no answer. I think that's strange. He hasn't got the cousin's number. I think so, oh, maybe they've just, maybe they're in another room or, I don't know. There's no idea. A couple of hours past, still nothing. Can't get hold of them. Hmm. Let's leave it there. Where have the girls gone? What's happened to them? They're in Singapore. Hmm. See you on the next one. Bye-bye.